Hillary Clinton will be getting some support on the campaign trail next week by President Obama. The president will join her at a campaign event in North Carolina on Tuesday for the first time in the election cycle. The president getting more political as he wraps up his term. His address in Canada yesterday, for example, targeted Trump and Trump's policies. Joining us right now is the co-host of Fox News' The Five and author of the new book, Wake Up America. Eric Bowling with us right now. Eric, good to see you. Great to be here. Congratulations everybody. on the book. Fantastic, fantastic timing right in the middle of this heated political season. The message is resonating. The message is it's a, it's a serious pushback against the PC culture from top to bottom, from politics to the media, and, and how it's trickled into academia. So I have a 17-year-old son who is on his way to college, and I think I've instilled the right values and virtues in him. But he's going to, about to go into a four-year school, and as we all know, what's going on in the, in the colleges, where diversity is more important than algebra, and safe spaces are more, more important than science. I'm nervous that four years, he comes out and he can't compete on the global, pick, the global landscape with the likes of China, Russia, Brazil, South Korea, et cetera. So I'm not sure we're preparing our kids. Anyway, yeah, the book pushes right. back against all that and says, stand up, be seen. Speak your mind. I want to hear more about the book, yeah. but, but get, give us your take right now on sort of the issues of the day. President Obama uh, going to campaign with Hillary next week. Will it help? Will it help Hillary? Well, I think it is. It will help him because President Obama has, a, has quite a following. I find it interesting that President Obama says uh, someone else. He can't name Donald Trump. Right, I know. He wants to Kind of like he can't name Islamic terror. You know, he has a problem naming things. And <laughs> so look at our poll. Our poll shows Hillary Clinton with, a, what, a six point lead? Yeah, six yeah. point. Margin of error, three three on each side, which basically means that's a statistical tie, given Donald Trump has very obviously had some of the worst weeks in his entire campaign in, in 13 months. These are probably the worst three weeks. So he's doing all right. He's also doing very well in two important swing states, Ohio and Pennsylvania. If you take what Mitt Romney won in 2012 and then add Ohio, Pennsylvania and Florida it's a Republican presidency wow. going forward. And that's not a tall order. Right now, he's tied in two of them. He needs a little help in Florida. Can I ask you one thing, though, in, in the Fox News poll, that party unity on the Republican side is, is a, a trouble spot. It's troubling. 51% 50, yeah. of people would rather have someone else than Donald Trump as a Republican nominee still. The, How do you fix it? The, the geniuses, the mainstream, the, um, let's call them establishment genius in Republicans in D.C., are dividing the party and they're going to hand an election to Hillary Clinton. They need to get in line, get, get behind Donald Trump. Supreme Court, we all know about the Supreme Court. If Hillary Clinton wins, you have a, at least a 5-4 liberal Supreme Court, maybe a 6-3 court going down the road. More importantly than that, believe it or not, federal judges. The president appoints federal judges. If you have eight more years of liberal federal judge, uh, judges being appointed, you're going to have uh, the complete judicial branch being liberal. Life as our kids know it and our grandkids know it will be vastly different. First Amendment will be at risk. Second Amendment will be at risk. Immigration will be at risk. We know what's going on recently with, with the abortion debate and with affirmative action. The whole court will lean even further left. Yeah. I want to go back to the book for a second. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing story of your life. It's very authentic and very real. And it, you got a lot of grit, Eric. And so I want to talk about how you've been successful in a number of different things in your life. Being a trader, baseball player, now a television star. Talk about the grit and how you can relate that to our children, if you will. To our children, yeah. So, so uh, I, I outlined it. Thank you, Anthony, for pointing that out. There's a ton of politics in the book. It's a political book. It's, it's, right now it's number one on Amazon in politics. But there's also history, too. I talk about the Founding Fathers, what they were thinking when they applied all the things that they wrote about and, and, and predicted and, and, and sent it to us many, many, 250 years ago. And then the, the personal stories. This is absolutely true. My family was dead poor, dead broke growing up. Not Hillary Clinton dead broke, but for real dead broke. I'll never forget sitting in, uh, there's a, a store called Valueville in Chicago. It was, it was type of a uh, Kmart type of store, five and 10 store. And my mom said, get some sneakers. So I ran over and got some sneakers, pro Keds, amazing, beautiful pro Keds. I, I brought them to her. I'll never forget the look on her face. She looked at me with this sad face, uh, just a horrible face. And she said, son, we can't afford those. In that moment, I was six or seven years old, that moment I realized there were haves and have-nots. And that was a, a, just a reality check right there at that moment. And we were part of the have-nots. So I spent the rest of my life basically trying to become, get, get out of the have-nots and, and, and 
obviously, Anthony, you, you fall on your butt a bunch of times. You got to dust yourself off and get back up. And that's what I really hit on on the book. Hopefully, it's a roadmap for conservatives. I think we're being dragged to the left by seven and a half years of President I Obama. I told you in the bring break. Bring it back to the center. I want Mark Levin to read the. Every time I see the title, I want to hear Mark Levin go, Wake up, America! <laughs> well, he happens to be one of the people who wrote a quote. Levin, listen, listen to this group. I was going to say. Bill O'Reilly. Wake up! Yeah. Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, Donald Trump, Trump, Mark Cuban, and Mark Levin. And you dedicated it to President Obama. I dedicated the book to President Barack Obama. I'm actually signed this one for President Obama. I saw Obama. you sign it the other night on your show. There it yeah. is. For making, it, for making it so easy for me to write. The, the book practically wrote itself. And that was because, remember, when he famously said we want to fundamentally transform America, and then we elected him anyway, and he's done everything in his power to do it. I'm trying to take that power away. And, and he also said you didn't build that. You didn't build that as in here that as well. Book as well. Yeah. Eric, congrats. congratulations on Thanks. the book. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks. congratulations on who you are. Thank yeah. you, Anthony. Absolutely. That's great, great friend. Great to be here. Thank yeah. you, Eric. We go back a long way, don't we? A great friend, yep. Yeah. Same hair, always. too. No, Which I did. <laughs> he's, got, he's, got better, he's got better hair. Can I tell you, I was watching this morning. That tie is amazing. Oh, you see that, that is a good looking tie. That is a good looking tie.